Thanks for tuning in with us once again today. Talk to you about an uh, interesting area, um, I believe, and an area that becomes greater and greater significance and greater and greater importance to folks. Um, thinking about pregnancy. What do I do? <clears throat> I'm thinking about um, having children. And what are some of the basics that I need to know about making sure that I'm in the healthiest state to provide a healthy outcome for my child? Um, so I think you have to realize that a lot of what you're going to be doing here is putting yourself in the most physically viable position and condition um, to ensure, um, support, um, adequate um, conception, to make sure that then what I'm doing prior to that that I don't affect the baby or the offspring in a negative way. We all know that um, spina bifida was and can be literally pretty much limited to being non-existent with an adequate level of folic acid, folate, um, to have that in the, a woman's body prior to conception. Not only just once she conceives, but we know that <clears throat> her status weeks and months um, prior to conception are probably just as important as, well, I'm pregnant, I need to be on Foley. So uh, the, the, the basics to me are, for a woman, number one, you must be aware of the amount of trans fats that you consume. You're thinking about getting pregnant, the more deep fried fats, the more rancid fats, the more saturated types of fats that you consume, uh, whether it's through deep, through french fries, through um, margarines, you have an incredibly increased risk potential for complications with conception. Let me just quote to you from an article that was done back in 2007, a Medscape article, that talks about for every 2% increase in energy intake, in other words, the calories that you consume, that are related to trans fatty acids, bad fats, hydrogenated oils, deep fried fats, etc., versus fats that are and um, or calories rather that, that would come from maybe quality sources of carbohydrates and so on. Seventy-three percent increased risk for ovulatory infertil infertility or ovulatory failure just by the amount of fats that you consume. Antioxidants are critically important as well. To support adequate um, potential for conception, we've got to have adequate levels of antioxidants in the male, in your spouse, um, and in yourself. Why? We're seeing more and more literature that supports that even women undergoing fertility treatments Sometimes their significant portion of them, their success depends upon having anti adequate antioxidants in their system. Adequate levels of ascorbates, the buffered forms of vitamin C, the right forms of vitamin E, adequate levels of magnesium, adequate levels of minerals and antioxidant types of preparations. It is important because what we're finding is it seems to protect sperm from a male uh, perspective including morphology, motility, and even in some cases sperm counts. There are other things that you can do between high doses of carnitine and coenzyme Q10 and buffered vitamin C. But just in a broad context, if you eat virtually no fruits and vegetables and have no colors in your diet, that's a huge problem. If you do not supplement, that's a huge problem. So prior to pregnancy, we need to make sure we don't eat a lot of bad fats because that can interfere with my ability to ovulate efficiently, to release um, follicularly, to release eggs, and potentially, hopefully, support uh, conception. Number two, your birth weight prior and your obviously your weight during pregnancy can have a significant outcome on the weight and the birth weight of your offspring. So if you're thinking about pregnancy and you're overweight, that is a significant, in my opinion, and I'm not a medical doctor, I'm a naturopathic doctor, I'm a board certified clinical nutritionist and a pharmacist. If you look at the literature, there is no doubt the heavier that you are prior, you create a lot of complications. I don't think there's a medical health professional that would disagree. Weight loss is critical here. I'll get into that in just a little bit why it's important. 
Number two, or number three rather, the insulin levels prior to pregnancy are critical because what can happen is if I eat poorly, I'm overweight, I become what we call insulin resistant. The more insulin resistant I am, the greater the potential for the development of uh, polycystic ovarian types of syndromes. My progesterone levels go down. My estrogen levels are driven up. My testosterone levels are up. I start to have problems with cycles. Uh, I can literally create an environment, not that you purposely create, but there are triggers as well, and your diet plays a huge role. If I develop polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is many times a result not just of elevated testosterone, but of high insulin, high insulin then leads to antagonizing the ovaries, driving up testosterone, driving up estrogen, dropping progesterone, and it leads to, in many cases, problems with fertility or what we would term sub-fertility. So exercise consistently, reasonable weight, not being overweight six months, nine months, a year prior to conception is as important as gaining weight during uh, pregnancy or gestation. Why? Key role here of insulin, how insulin affects your ovaries, how then the ovaries obviously are involved with release of eggs. So we need to get a big picture concept that the better my weight and the better that I control my weight and lower my insulin. I'm not talking about blood sugar here. That's a whole other issue. I'm talking about insulin. Insulin is a precursor to blood sugars. So I must manage my insulin. And the way you do it is walking, exercise, even resistance or weight training. It has to be light, can be machines, a quality diet, lots of vegetables, a reasonable amount of fruits, lean sources of uh, proteins, poultry, some fish, um, eating reasonably, small meals, have an adequate weight, plays a key role. D3 levels, vitamin D3. Literature now showing that your vitamin D levels have a significant impact on the child that you are hopefully going to carry in your womb. Uh, we know that literature states and supports, and we'll cover this in a following video as well, that there are higher rates of type 1 diabetes. The rates are skyrocketing. An article recently done depicting, out of the Journal of Endocrinology, depicting some of the um, factors that lead to islet cell autoimmunity, which means your pancreas, pancreas um, failing in essence because of self-attacking. Well, certainly there are genetic factors. Number two, reduction of breastfeeding, cow's milk exposure early on in a child's uh, development, low vitamin D intake, viral infection, childhood infections, perinatally Vitamin D levels is low. Vitamin D can play a key role in the development of type 1 diabetes and other autoimmune conditions in your child, in your offspring. The other area that we want to cover, and this will be part one of preparing for pregnancy, prepping myself for pregnancy. This will be part one. Part two will cover some other factors as well, but good bacteria plays a key role, plays a vital role in not only the health during pregnancy, your health, but then also for your child. So we often tell women that they need to be on quality omega-3 fatty acids, omega-3 800s, quality sources of good bacteria, have your 25 OHD levels checked, understand what your vitamin D levels are, and then dose accordingly. We're grossly underdosed in this area. Well, I'm going to ask you to stay tuned for part two of preparing for pregnancy. What can a woman do? What parts of the puzzle can she put into place that help to ensure a healthy pregnancy by putting all of the key factors? There are certain things we cannot control, but that which we can, we should, we must. Stay tuned for part two of preparing for pregnancy. Thanks for listening.